Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, a possibility to participate in this conference. Especially, I am grateful to the organizers, Professor Ali Genscher, for his uh, kind help to uh, attend this conference, even in the last uh, days uh, to register. Okay, so uh, the topic of this talk is uh, somehow related to the topic of the uh, invited talk given today by Jacques Tampere because uh, uh, collective excitations uh, like phonons and other collective excitations uh, participate in the formation of polarons in, in, in particular and uh, uh, also they uh, are important for the, uh, uh, the for the determination of the uh, parameters of the uh, internal state of a superfluid and superconducting matter. Uh, we uh, consider here uh, a report about uh, some recent results of uh, our uh, work uh, in the field of collective expectations. We have uh, received recently some uh, interesting results on collective expectations in uh, neutral uh, atomic uh, superfluids, but uh, uh, the most recent results uh, uh, are uh, uh, a subject of particular attention in this talk, uh, because uh, uh, it was very interesting whether it's possible to uh, describe the uh, collective excitations in uh, neutral uh, atomic uh, Fermi superfluids and in superconductors especially in the strong coupling regime, within the one and the same approach. Uh, we use the uh, path integral formalism to describe collective excitations. And uh, first, I would like to uh, briefly uh, remind uh, about uh, main types of collective excitations in uh, fermionic superfluids. Uh, as uh, was already uh, told today by Jacques Tampere, in neutral superfluids, uh, they exist uh, depending on the uh, re uh, re uh, coupling regime, several types of uh, collective excitations. In the uh, weak coupling uh, regime, the uh, bargain cooper schrieffer pairing, there exists the sound like the anderson bogolubov modes, and, uh, which are fa purely phase and uh, uh, pair-breaking. Higgs collective excitations, uh, they also exist in the strong coupling regime, but they, in the uh, 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 strong coupling uh, regime the way, um, of molecular, molecular pairing uh, in real space, of course, the uh, Higgs mode does not exist because uh, there is no uh, branching cut anymore at the uh, uh, pair breaking uh, edge. Uh, uh, what changed uh, when we go to the charge superfluids? Uh, is uh, instead of uh, the uh, Anderson Bogolub modes, at finite temperatures can still exist a pure uh, sound-like mode, but uh, of other nature, because it is the so-called carlson goldman mode, which is related to the uh, oscillations uh, mainly of the normal fraction. Uh, and uh, the, uh, when we turn on the Coulomb interaction, the former uh, anderson bogolub mode shifts at zero momentum to the finite gapped value, the plasma mode. So it is not the anderson bogolub it is a bit other uh, type of collective excitations. Uh, in order to describe uh, in unified approach both uh, charge and neutral fluids, we use the uh, path integral formalism, uh, which was previously used for neutral superfluids, where the uh, partition function of the Fermi system is uh, described as a path integral, 
through the uh, Grafman variables, anti-commuting variables, with the action, which uh, with the uh, model contact interaction, which, uh, which uh, describes the pairing, as wave pairing here. And uh, uh, with the charge superfluids, one term is added, the co repulsive colon interaction. And it uh, results in the uh, appearance of the additional Bose field in the uh, hubbard stratonovich formalism. Uh, the, uh, in addition to the pairing field, we uh, have now the uh, density field. And as a result, we uh, appear to the uh, if, uh, after the uh, Hubbard Stratnoid shift and integrating out the fermionic variables, we obtain the effective bosonic action with uh, pair and density fields. And uh, the next step is the expansion of uh, this effective action in power of fluctuations about the uh, uniform uh, values of the fields, and as a, result, as a result, we appear as a quadratic action uh, of the uh, modulus amplitude of the pair field, phase of the pair field, and the density field. Uh, in, in this quadratic action, all variables are in general mixed. And uh, on the basis of this uh, uh, effective action, we obtain the spectra of collective expectations uh, in principle in several ways, but we use uh, now in parallel uh, two complementary uh, approaches. First, we of course can extract the spectra of collective excitations, both the uh, agent frequencies and uh, dumping factors uh, numerically, rather qualitatively, using the uh, spectral weight functions, which uh, are obtained uh, uh, through the uh, green uh, green functions, uh, analytically continued to the real axis, and uh, this spectral weight gives us uh, some peaks of, uh, in general, of finite widths and positions and widths of these peaks gives us some information, very reliable but qualitative information about uh, spectra of collective excitations. Uh, in addition, in parallel, we can obtain spectra, both the uh, frequencies and dumping analytically using the uh, equation uh, for the uh, determinant of the uh, dynamic matrix of collective excitations. Uh, and in general, they uh, cannot be obtained uh, without some tricks because uh, the branching cut as a real axis in general uh, uh, prevent uh, uh, us to see the poles, the roots of the determinant uh, without analytic continuation of the determinant through the uh, branch cut. Now we cannot see the uh, root, but if we make analytic continuation through the real axis, we can see those roots. They were, they existed, but they uh, were only hidden behind this uh, branch cut as behind the wall or behind the mirror. Now we open windows in this mirror and can see the uh, agent solutions, both the real and imaginary parts of, this, of, of them give us both uh, frequencies and dumping factors. In general, there are several uh, windows for the analytic continuation possible because of the presence of uh, several uh, angular points at the real axis. And uh, uh, this gives us, in general, a rather rich uh, structure of the agent solutions. Uh, first, uh, I would like briefly, only briefly, remind uh, about uh, our uh, older results, which, which were already reported on uh, the conferences and published, uh, uh, which uh, are related to the neutral superfluids, but only briefly. First, uh, I would like to uh, 
say about some uh, results obtained us in 2019 about the pair breaking collecting excitations in neutral superfluids. And uh, in this work, we uh, uh, revised some old re uh, results which were uh, thought to be recognized, but it uh, was necessary to uh, revisit them. It, it appears that uh, even those uh, very well-known results uh, need to be uh, corrected. So, uh, for example, the uh, dispersion of Higgs modes at uh, low momentum is different from the very uh, well-known result by Littlewood and Varma. Also, we have in the same, uh, using the same method of the analytic continuation, we obtain the remarkable agreement uh, for the sound velocity uh, in a, a superfluid Fermi gas. Uh, remarkable agreements with the experiment by uh, Sasha Hoinka, Chris Vail uh, of 2017. Uh, this just uh, proves uh, the uh, validity of uh, our approach. And now I uh, also can uh, remind about uh, the application of our method to uh, the two band, two band uh, Fermi superfluids, where we have obtained the uh, spectra of all modes existing in the two band superfluids, the uh, phononic modes, Anderson Bogolubo, the uh, pair breaking mode, and uh, legged mode, which are specific for the uh, multi band uh, superfluids, which are related physically to the uh, mutual uh, uh, oscillation of the mutual phase uh, difference between the uh, two components of a superfluid. Uh, they are very well uh, resolved in the uh, uh, spectral weight functions for a different uh, response function for the phase phase response and the amplitude amplitude response. For example, as a function of momentum at at uh, uh, some. A finite temperature below the transition temperature, uh, we can see the coexistence of all those branches. The, for example, pair breaking mode are resolved only in the amplitude response, but not in phase. But legged mode are almost purely phase. And uh, what is interesting here is that legged modes, uh, contrary to the rather common opinion, can penetrate to the pair breaking continuum, uh, they does not vanish there. Uh, the same effect we can see uh, in the temperature dependence of eigenfrequencies uh, for some fixed uh, small but uh, finite momentum. We can see the penet uh, penetration of legged mode to the continuum. But now I uh, must go to the uh, charged superfluids, and uh, uh, we again uh, study the uh, collective excitations in charged superfluids using uh, two parallel methods, the spectral functions, which are analytically expressed in a rather compact form in, uh, through the matrix element of the uh, Gaussian fluctuation propagator, and uh, the uh, uh, alternative uh, way, just uh, analytic solution using uh, analytic solution obtained using the uh, analytic continuation of the uh, uh, propagator through the uh, real axis. Uh, first, uh, I can uh, show some non-trivial result about the uh, dispersion of the plasma mode. Uh, in the case when the uh, interaction strength uh, of the contact repulsive interaction is sufficient in order to make the plasma mode uh, rather uh, low in order to be comparable with the uh, pair breaking continuum. This is the most interesting case, but of course it is not yet realized uh, uh, experimentally, but we expect that it can be uh, realized, for example, in high-TZ superconductors. 
with some uh, correction, we now consider that three-dimensional case, but the uh, consideration for uh, IT supermutators requires rather two-dimensional formalism, but it is not a problem. Of course, it is now in, in progress, but uh, nevertheless, it's interesting to show some non-trivial effects when the plasma mode crosses the pair-breaking continuum edge. Uh, uh, and the most interesting here is that, it, that the plasma mode, which is shown here, the black curve, uh, uh, exhibits a non-monotonic behavior I, uh, as distinct from the uh, traditional behavior of the plasma mode. It, is ne it has negative dispersion at low moment. Uh, for the same system, uh, we can uh, consider also the uh, response function, the spectral weight function, function in the far BCS regime, where we can see for several values of momentum, uh, the behavior of the uh, spectral weight function. This is a plasma mode, which is close to the resonance between uh, plasma mode and pair breaking continuum. And we can see that the plasma mode, in fact, is split uh, to the branches below and above the pair breaking continuum. And the, uh, above the continuum uh, edge, uh, it uh, acquire, uh, acquires a damping as distinct from the behavior below. Uh, it is not the pair breaking mode because uh, in the far BCS regime, uh, pair breaking and uh, plasma mode are uh, completely uh, decoupled. So it is just a splitting of the plasma mode. Uh, when we go uh, from the far BCS regime to uh, the whole crossover, or to stronger interaction, we can consider first the spectral weight function for the uh, collective excitations. You can see that the, at zero temperature, the upper panels, we can see uh, the split, split plasma mode in the phase response, uh, the pair breaking mode in the modulus response, and again the plasma mode in the density response, which shows some uh, resonant enhancement when it uh, crosses the uh, pair breaking continuum. At non-zero temperature, we can see uh, more modes. We can see the uh, sound like the Carlson Goldman mode, which does not exist at zero temperature, and the same mode which we already discussed. And uh, this result uh, again uh, gives some revision of the uh, uh, old result by uh, Ohashi and Takada. Uh, who obtained uh, some uh, uh, two branches for the Carlson, Go Carlson Goldman mode. This seems to be an artifact of their, uh, art their uh, approximation because they uh, did not use the uh, mutually consistent solution for the damping and uh, eigen frequency. When we uh, obtain this uh, mutually consistently, uh, we can see only uh, one branch, no upper branch, as distinct from the Salbe, Ohashi, and Takada. Again, we can consider uh, the same modes uh, for some fixed momentum as a function of the uh, bare plasma frequency, which is used uh, here as an external parameter, as a measure of the Coulomb strength. And uh, at zero temperature, we can see split of the plasma mode near the pair breaking continuum and near the upper bound for the existence of uh, pair breaking excitations. It is split to two branches. And for higher plasma, bare plasma frequencies, it uh, goes to the standard results, which is just equal to omega p. And uh, for the modulus response, we can see. Uh, a resonant enhancement of the uh, spectral weight corresponding to the modulus response due to the, of course, uh, due to the indirect interaction 
with the plus mode. This uh, uh, is promising for the experimental observation of the Higgs mode in uh, strongly coupled superconductors, if we can uh, achieve uh, so small plasma frequencies to be compared with delta. Again, in the density, we can see uh, density response, uh, zero temperature, we can see uh, the same split as the phase response. And at finite temperature, uh, we can see more splittings because of the, uh, of the appearance of more uh, angular frequencies corresponding to the bounds for different channels for uh, scattering. And what is remarkable here, again, the modulus, modulus response shows us the resonance enhancement and uh, the uh, density response also shows some resonant peak uh, uh, which similarly uh, corresponds to the uh, uh, pair breaking contribution. Uh, again, uh, we can uh, see now uh, the results for the aggregate frequencies and damping factors at uh, zero temperature and uh, finite temperature where we can see a, a rich structure of eigen solutions, but uh, they all closely follow uh, the uh, results of, for the spectral weight function. This is a uh, spectra as function of uh, momentum, which shows dispersion, and those uh, spectra show us the dependence of the plasma frequency. We can see the anti uh, avoided crossing of the uh, pair breaking mode and plasma mode, what is the most remarkable here. So, uh, the, the fingerprint of the interaction between plasma and uh, pair breaking modes when they are sufficiently close to each other. And in, as a conclusion, we can say that uh, the, our method uh, is sufficiently, uh, is successfully extended for the uh, charged superfluids in the same way as it was applied to neutral superfluid. And uh, it seems to be promising for the comparison with future experiment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Please. Thank you for a very nice talk. So I have one question. So uh, do you have any direct predictions for new type of superconductors that you can derive from your research? So can you we like some uh, we have only hypothesis. Uh, uh, first of all, I already, uh, as I already mentioned, the high TC superconductors uh, can be very promising to the application of uh, uh, our techniques uh, with uh, only a rather uh, small uh, change from 3D to 2D, but because the plasma frequency in two-dimensional uh, superconductors goes to zero when momentum goes to zero and even uh, faster than the sound velocity, uh, it is uh, promising to the to observe the crossing uh, or anti-crossing in of plasma and uh, other modes in uh, to in the, uh, high TC superconductors. And the second candidate, possible candidate, may be some uh, iron selenide family, but I'm not sure. Uh, the uh, superconductors which can be uh, explored in the BEC BCS crossover are the most uh, promising candidates. Thank you. More questions? If uh, no more questions, uh, let us thank speaker again for his interesting talk. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh.